So we're continuing today the Defy Gravity series. I'm excited to kind of wrap this series up today. Because over the past few weeks we've been talking about what it means to live really the high points or the, the high calling that God has for us in our life. That he has basically like uh, God for all of us has this higher level or higher calling that he wants us to live in. But sometimes there's things that are holding us down. Like there's a weight or a gravitational pull to our life that holds us back from all the things that God has for us and holds us down. But God wants us to live up here. Sometimes we end up settling down here. There's things that are a pull on us. It might be our past. It might be a brokenness and maybe a hurt in our life. It might be sin that that has kind of a hold and a grip on us that that we need to be free from. (coughs) Excuse me. Okay. That we need to be free from. And, uh, And so God wants us to live up here and not down there. So listen, he wants a, you and I both to defy gravity. And so let's talk about what that means. The past few weeks we've been talking about what it means to live free in God, that he wants us to have uh, healing from that, all that stuff, from the hurt and brokenness. He wants us to live free. But last week we talked about the names and the labels that we sometimes live, that that get attached to our life, that sometimes we hold on to. They become part of our identity, but God has given us an identity. He has a label for each and every one of us to live. And today we're going to talk about the patterns that we live out in our life. Because the patterns that we live really kind of dictate how we handle and how we face problems. Now, anybody out there like me and you like something new like you're on the leading edge you are an early adopter you show me your hands come on let let me know you're there you like to get the newest thing the greatest thing now now for me it might be technology like I would love now I don't do this because I can't do it but I would be one of those people that oh I would get the newest latest greatest phone as soon as it came out and I would love that and feel like oh there's new features on here there's new things on there that that's going to help my life be easier it's going to help solve some problems in my life and and I always like that stuff and and like kind of that that type of thing you might be on another end of the spectrum you like I need the latest and greatest like kitchen gadget like you're the person that's got the pressure cooker, you got the air fryer, but you also got the waffle cone maker, you also got like the snow cone machine, like you got the gadgets that are going to just make life simpler. And I think a lot of times what we can do is we can look to new things like they're going to solve a problem, they're going to make life easier, they're going to simplify things, and we even look at maybe technology like that, but honestly, right, it makes it more complex, it makes it more difficult it makes it sometimes more challenging, and they don't actually solve our problems. They actually create more problems. But we're going to talk today about when we face problems, how some of the patterns that we have in our life can really help us through them, that it's not something new that we always need to be pursuing, but maybe it's the principled patterns in our life that if we establish godly principles in our life, they're going to help us develop a pattern that's going to help us overcome when we face a problem and we face a a spot where we're struggling. We're going to look at the life of Daniel today. And Daniel chapter 6 is a, a chapter where it's a story, you, if you've been in church a little while, you might have heard it before. And if you're not, you, you know, pattern in his life that serves and honors God. And we see God miraculously do something. And we're going to look at that today because the pattern can make all the difference. The patterns that we live can make all the difference. Sometimes those are good patterns, right? We have good patterns and things that we more negative or bad patterns in our life, that there are things that are like, oh, these are the patterns of, uh, that, I, that I've kind of living out in life, and these are the things that I'm doing that maybe are holding me back, and we can have bad patterns in our life, and you maybe don't even realize sometimes all the patterns that you have, the behaviors that you, you're, you live with or you, you uh, live out in your everyday life, but I'm sure if you're married or you have a significant other that they probably can help you identify the patterns that you have that are maybe maybe bad patterns or negative, you know, that I see a couple nudges in the room like, I know your patterns, I know how you are. And sometimes it helps to have that reflection. And I think about raising our kids and uh, today's our son's birthday. Andrew is 18 years old and uh, excited about that because uh, I can't believe it, and I can't believe that I'm only 28 and he's 18. I just don't know how God allowed that to happen, but uh, amazing. And 
and he's 18 years old, and one of the greatest joys about raising kids, but also one of the greatest challenges, is seeing yourself in kids. Seeing yourself in your kids. Like, you're going if to, you, if, as your kids grow up, you're going to have this experience. If you don't have kids already, you're going to, I trust that this is going to be your same torture as it's been mine. But you see the patterns that your kids live out, and they're often the patterns or the things that you do yourself. They're the things you say or the things you do. And you see them in your kids, and there's been so many times where I'm like, knock that off or stop doing that or don't say that. And it's like, I know that I do that, and I'm telling, like, I'm total, like, in that moment, like, a hypocrite saying, don't do that, like, but I know that I do it, or I say that, and it's a reflection. It's one of those honest moments where it's like, you see the pattern in your kids, and it, it almost speaks to you, and the pattern that you're living in your life, and helps you kind of correct, and so it's one of the greatest things about our family is we'll always call those things out, and they're good things. They're like, that is so your dad, and, and that is, you know, Jamie will say that to one of our kids, like, that's so your dad, and there's things that she'll, the kids will do, and I'll be like, that's so, you're so much like your mom, or she does that exact same thing, and you kind of call those patterns out, and it's interesting because it's been modeled before them. It's, it's modeled out, and that's what a pattern is oftentimes. It's, it's a behavior that's modeled out, so you might have some patterns in your life that come from your family. It might be come from your upbringing. It might be come from a parent or uh, a family member that has been a pattern built into your life, but today I want to not zero in on those things, and, and really I, uh, I'm not saying that we need to identify with those things. We need to identify with the godly patterns we can establish in our life. So as we talk about that, we're going to look at Daniel. Because Daniel was a man that lived his life and patterned his life and modeled his life after God. And that's right, that's our, that's our calling. That's where we live the place, the high calling that God has for us. And Daniel did it. And in chapter 6 of Daniel, we, we catch up in the story and he's, he's actually living uh, and has tremendous favor in his life, Daniel does. Because uh, he, is a, uh, he is serving under a king and he's got a lot of favor and that he's been kind of appointed one of the high rulers. Now, in those days, the king ruled over the land, but he had appointed like 120 other different leaders to help rule the land in different areas and provinces and cities and parts. And, and in Daniel chapter 6, we see that uh, God has given Daniel so much favor that not only is he part of the 120, but he's actually even a part of a more select group of like three that would be kind of like, almost think of it like these are the, the top tier leaders. Like the three of them report to the king and the rest report to them. And so Daniel even kind of has a, a higher point of standing. And we see that his, the favor that he has in his life has, has given him so much uh, uh, favor in the king's eyes that God's given him favor that... Now the king actually wants to elevate him and make him second in command and kind of bring him above the other three and say, okay, this guy is number one. I think that's awesome. And I think his story speaks, the sp story of Daniel speaks to how we don't have to compromise to be successful. I think a lot of times in our world and in business, and I know many of you work in, in areas and, and you see people doing anything they can do to get ahead and take advantage and, and you know, uh, you know, break rules and, and run over people just to get ahead and, and just to be successful. But I think the story of Daniel shows us that there's a pattern and there's a model and a way we can live in our life where we don't have to do that, where we can honor God and God can bring favor and success in our life. And I, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that we don't have to live with the pattern of this world and it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, but we can have our eyes fixed on what God's doing in our hearts and have our eyes fixed on what he has for us and, and we can live to his plan and we can live in his favor in our life. And Daniel's story highlights that. It highlights really the, the picture that we don't have to be, we don't have to compromise to be successful. So what happened in the story of Daniel is these guys that he had so much favor, they became jealous of him. They began to conspire and say, how can we, how can we get this guy? How can we have him fall out of favor in the king's eyes? How can we trap him? Uh, jealousy began to arise, and they began to hatch a plan. And they said, listen, this guy's character is top-notch. There's nothing that we can 
throw that is going to stick because he does everything by the book. He's, he's following God's plan in his life. He's built this and established this pattern of modeling a godly heart. And, and I love that. I think we can see that. But you can see that there's this problem that starts to rise, that the enemy is coming against him and, and trying to trap him. And these men start to hatch a plan and they think, okay, the only area that we are going to be able to get Daniel is if we really kind of trap him when it comes to his faith. We know that he goes and he prays to God three times a day, and he doesn't miss. He's devoted. He's following God, and we see that. We see that he he he's doing that and 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 following his plan or following uh, God's plan for his life. And and so they say, okay, that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. That so that we're gonna go to the king and we're gonna tell the king he should create a law where no one can pray to anybody other than the king. No one can worship anybody other than the king. And we know that's going to trap Daniel. And so they go before the king, and I'm sure they're flattering him, and they're saying things that are going to make, kind of puff him up and think, oh, this is a good idea. I should do this. I should, I should make this law. And he doesn't really think about it or think about what the impact of it and probably gets caught in the prideful moment, and it feels really good. And, and he writes a law and they create a law and he passes this law that it, for 30 days no one can pray in the land to anybody but the king. Like he's elevated himself to God level. Now that's a problem and he's, he's put himself in a position here and, and, and Daniel sees a problem now in front of him. He's been presented with a problem. So he's had tremendous favor in his life. He's seen God's blessing in his, li- blessing in his life. But here he is, he's hitting a little bit of a roadblock. He's hitting a difficult spot. He's struggling right here, and, and he's caught in this problem that he's facing, and he doesn't know how to overcome it. He doesn't know what to do. And I think the pattern that then we see Daniel live out is one that we need to apply to our life. And I want to pick it up in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, and really see and look at how he responds when he hears about this law that has been passed. The law that's been passed, it says that so, but when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and he knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with its windows o- open towards Jerusalem. And he prayed three times a day, just as he has always done, giving thanks to his God. Then the officials went together to Daniel's house and they found him praying and asking for God's help. You hear that right there? What did he do? He went and he prayed. Now, i got to be honest with you, I feel like there's a lot of times that I like to think that that would be my first response or that might be, be my first action when I hear about things in, my, in culture and I hear about things in our world going sideways. I feel like my noble side wants to be like, yes, I'm going to pray and I'm going to come to God. But I, my flesh says, I want to take the Facebook. I want to gather people together. I want to rise up. Let's build an army. Let's fight back. Let's, let's proclaim this. Let's, let's, let's go against the grain. But what does Daniel do? He doesn't do that. He actually goes and he goes and in his pattern, prays and comes back to the Lord. I think that's a challenge for us, a reminder for us that Listen, that we have a chance and an opportunity to respond when we face problems. And I think our inclination sometimes is to take on that problem ourselves and carry that ourselves and think, okay, I'm going to go for it. But the reality is God's saying, listen, the pattern that I want you to follow is put your trust and come back to me. And I see that when... Daniel comes back, comes to the Lord, he prays, and he, he's finding, and he says, now that he's just not praying and saying, God, help me out of this situation. It's actually saying he's giving thanks to God. Think about that in the moment. Think about how counter-cultural that is in the moment that this problem is arising, and here he is praying and not just saying, God, here's my problem, and here's what I'm facing, but he's actually giving thanks to God through it all. I think that's a challenge for us, and we see that Daniel walks through this challenge and this problem with another level of peace. And I want you to understand that today. It's when a pattern of prayer in our life, it's going to bring peace to us. When we have a pattern of prayer and God wants you to be a person of prayer. God wants you to be a person that comes back to him and trusts him. God wants you to be a person that says, hey, I want, I want to hear your heart. I want to know your heart. And you know what? You can be a person of of prayer. You say, man, that's not me, Pastor Don. That's somebody else. That's, that's not 
like who I am, and I would just push back and say, that is who you are. Like if you're following Jesus, you can be a person of prayer. If you know how to talk to a friend, a neighbor, or a someone, you know how to talk, you can talk to God. God's not looking for high, like big, big words and a, a religious conversation. God is looking to hear your heart. He's looking to know where you're at. He's wanting to give you a peace and, and you in that moment to find a trust in him. So when we face the problems in our life, we know that prayer gives us a pattern of peace. It brings peace to us. It helps us get through those things when we face those problems. And God wants us to go there. He wants us to live that type of way. He wants us to kind of find our peace in that moment. So what happens in the story of Daniel is as it continues on that here he is. Now he's been caught praying against the law and and these guys, they say, well, king, you got to bring them in. you got to charge them like the law has said. Like, this is what's got to happen. And you might be wondering, like, well, this is the king. Like, couldn't the king just do whatever he wants? Like, couldn't the king just put it, like, break the law and say, hey, Daniel is my favored one. Like, he, I, I, I trust him. He's my advisor. And I believe in his God. And couldn't the king just reverse it? Well, actually, culturally, in that time, that it was like once it was law and it was written, it was enforced. Like you could not change it. You could not go back. You could not replace it with another law. It had to be executed in that time. And so the king, his hands are tied in this moment. So these men, they bring da Daniel in and they're saying, listen, Daniel has broken the law, king. What are you going to do about it? Your decree says that that anybody that prays to someone else, they would be thrown in the lion's den and they would be punished in that type of way. Now, you might be saying, lion's den, what? Like, it was actually in that time, in Bible times, that kings often, like, their sport was hunting lions. And so it's not abnormal for them to have a den of lions, like, that they kept to release or hunt or, you know, and, you know, so... While that's wild to think about, like at the time, it was probably pretty normal. And, and anybody in this place, anybody watching online, have a lion's den, make sure you send me a message or catch me after church. I'd like to come visit your house and check it out. So, But it seems abnormal to us, but there's a, like he's got a lion's den. And the punishment was, hey, we're going to throw someone in the lion's den. And I don't know about you, but that's not where I want to be. That's not where I'm going. That's not where I want to land. In life is in the lion's den because it seems like they're going to devour me. They're going to go after me. But Daniel, in this moment, he has a peace and he has a trust in God. And because he's gone to God in prayer, he knows he's got to walk and he's got to hold this ground. And he's got to live this out in his life. And God has given him that type of peace. And, and as he's doing that, we see that he gets thrown in. And God miraculously does something in his life. And let me continue with the story later on in verse um, sorry, verse 19, it says, very early the next morning, what happened after they had sealed the lid and they'd thrown him in the lion's den. Very early the next morning, the king got up and he hurried out to the lion's den. And when he had got there, he called out in anguish. He said, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you serve so faithfully able to rescue you from the lions? And Daniel answered, long live the king. My God sent his angels to shut the, the, shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me. For I have been found innocent in his sight and I have not wronged you, your majesty. So we see here in Daniel, God miraculously in the moment, he protects him. And I, wanna, I want you to get, get this. I want you to understand this because this king is calling it out. The king is saying, listen, the God whom you've served so faithfully. There's right there. We see a pattern, that Daniel had a pattern of faithfulness that brought fruitfulness in this moment. See, that miracle wasn't just a miracle that just happened in, you know, by chance in that moment. Daniel was faithful throughout. Daniel was faithful through what God was calling him to do. He was faithful through every step of the way. And that faithfulness actually brought fruitfulness in this moment. And I'll tell you, in life, you're going to face problems, you're going to face struggles, and you're going to face difficulties that are going to be a test of your faithfulness. They're going to be a test as if, if I can stay the course, if I can follow God's plan for my life, if I can 
follow through and focus in on him. And they're going to be a test, but I want to tell you that if you keep your eyes fixed on what he's calling you to do, you keep your eyes fixed and trust him all throughout, the Bible says that that fruitfulness, fruitfulness will follow. And we see that here in the story of Daniel. That miraculous moment that God protects him and that there's a fruitfulness that comes when we have this pattern and we don't compromise in life. In the 1840s, I love hearing stories of missionaries. There's a missionary in the 1840s that his name was John Getty. And John Getty was a pastor in Canada and he actually felt a calling to leave his church in Canada. And, and he headed to uh, some islands in the South Pacific where no one, the people there had never heard about Jesus and so he felt this calling to leave the comfort and pack up his kids and his wife. And they headed out and, and sold all their possessions and took everything they had with them. And, and they set out to build this new life and reach these people on these islands with the message of hope of Jesus. Man, I look at his life and I think, man, that was a faithful step right there that he took uh, to set out and do this. But it gets even more challenging because as he landed there, he realized that, the people that he was called to reach and focus on and tell about Jesus, they, most of them were cannibals. And that even before he had arrived, there had been British explorers and merchants that had come and arrived via ship. And they had all been eaten by the people there and cannibalized. And I think about that's a moment, right, where you kind of want to say, I got a big problem right there. I got a problem to face. But we see that in his life, he 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 stayed with it like he was faithful through it and it took years and years and years before he ever saw the very first person come to know Jesus and he had to learn the language while he was there and watch out that he didn't get killed and didn't break customs that were going to cost him his life but he was faithful in doing what God called him to do and and he spent uh, years and years and years faithfully serving there until more and more people continued to follow Jesus and were reached for, for the kingdom. Until the end of his life in the 1870s, as he left, that island was completely transformed. That almost everyone there served Jesus because he was faithful at the beginning to serve all the way. And then eventually he saw the fruitfulness. I think that's a powerful principle is that when we have a pattern of faithfulness and whatever God's calling us to serve and do and leading us to is we're just faithful to do it. He's going to carry us through it. There's going to be fruitfulness on the other side of it. And we see that in the story of Daniel. The story continues as Daniel has this miraculous moment where he's saved. The king, the king realizes that, okay, he is, uh, God has protected him and he actually makes a declaration for the whole, the whole kind of uh, everyone under his rule to serve the God of Daniel. We see it kind of wrap up here, the king, in verse 23, it says, The king was overjoyed, and he ordered that Daniel be lifted from the den. And not a scratch was found on him, for he had trusted in his God. Get that, he trusted in him. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. So he prospered because he trusted God. And I would say another pattern we can build in our life is not just a prayer, and is not just a faithfulness, but a pattern of trust carries you through a test. Sometimes you're going to face some tests in your life, some trials, some problems, and when you trust God through them, they can carry you through that. And a pattern that we live out of being prayerful, being faithful, and trusting God is going to carry us through those tests. And the king saw his trust. I, thought, I love that he called out his faithfulness. I love that he called out his trust in God. And the king saw that. And he was seeing that there was a pattern. And it's not the first time that Daniel had done this. He was a trusted advisor to kings. He interpreted dreams. And God used him all throughout. And it's sometimes it's hard for us to trust God. Sometimes it's hard to hold on to, uh, uh, to let go of things. We want to hold on to things. And, and say, I, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going I'm to make it happen. But God's calling us, listen, let's trust him. And let's put our, our trust in him fully. When I was growing up, I remember seeing stickers, like bumper stickers, Christian bumper stickers on people's car. And they would say, like, Jesus is my co-pilot, okay? Jesus is my co-pilot. And we would say, like, oh, that's such a good, like, idea, such a good thought. But it, then people would be like, no, Jesus shouldn't be your co-pilot. Like, Jesus should be the pilot, right? If 
think the same thing is true. Like for us, we got to relinquish control. We got to allow God to, to work. We got to allow him to be the pilot of our life and realize that maybe we're just the co-pilot. He's the one in the driver's seat. Let's let him guide us and help us through that. So as we give God control and we trust him, he's going to help carry us through a test. That's not the end of the story there. The story doesn't quite end there because the guys that set up Daniel, the guys that, that in the first place tricked the king into creating this law, this is how the story ends for those guys. Then the king gave the orders to arrest the men who had maliciously accused Daniel, and he had them thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children, and the lions leaped on them and tore them apart before they even hit the floor of the den. Can you believe that? You know what that tells us? That when God's on your side, the stitches, the snitches get stitches. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, maybe that's not like a real principle right there, but I think it's crazy to think about that moment right there that God brought him through, that God helped him. It got scary. It's difficult, challenging moment. It was a world. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, he reminds us that we should not conform to the pattern of this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. It's a great reminder that there's a pattern that we're living in that maybe isn't the pattern that God has for us, but we have to rise above it. We have to live above it and build the patterns and the model in our life that God has for us. We have to do things that are going to be repetitious and disciplines in our life that are going to help us follow God greater. You know, it's when we face those problems that the pattern really comes in. I want to land it right here this morning and, and so you know and you remember, prepare us for the problems we face. You see, the, Daniel's problems that he faced in those moments, they were set up he was prepared for him. He knew what to do because he had established patterns in his life of trusting God, serving faithfully, being prayerful through it all. And God brought him through. And God wants us to live those types of patterns. He wants us to live that type of way in our life. He doesn't want us to conform to the ways of thinking in this world. He wants us to be transformed. He wants a renewing of our mind to happen. And he wants us to live the patterns that he has established the principles that he's established that are going to help us. They're going to help us face the problems. You see, God's word says that his spirit walks with us. His Holy Spirit is alive. His Holy Spirit is there guiding us every step of the way so that we don't have to walk through life and just think, oh, I got to do this on my own power and God's, God's going to help me here or there. No. The Bible says that we're empowered by the Spirit of God. It says that the transforming of our mind helps us to be renewed and, and, and helps us think differently about every problem we face. And we realize that God is with us every step of the way. And that His Spirit and His Holy Spirit is empowering us to live differently, to live a different pattern. That when I talk about living these patterns, I'm not talking about you trying harder and doing better. I'm talking about you releasing and, and submitting your yourself and your life to the call of God. I'm talking about you living out God's plan for your life. And I'm talking about his Holy Spirit helping you establish the patterns in your life that are going to help you face the problems and the difficulties you're in. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to live in that place. He wants us to defy gravity because we're not being held down by the problems we're facing, but we're empowered by his Holy Spirit. We believe that God can work through us all and that we see him empower us. We see him empower us uh, like in our everyday life. We see him carry us through trials and struggles. And it's not just on our own power. It's on the power of his spirit working through us and in us. So I want to just challenge you today and ask you today, what is the pattern that you've been living in life? What is the pattern that you've been living let the pattern that God has for us all be established so that when you face the problems, you're ready. You're ready. They're prepared. You're already ready for it. God's working in your life. You realize his spirit is empower you. And I think that's easier said than done sometimes, but we just have to be ready and release it to God. I'm going to pray in just a moment. I want to pray for all of us.